another GCSE economics video with me, Mr. Goff, from MrGoff.com. This video will focus on the consequences of the unequal distribution of wealth and incomes. Absolute poverty is when people don't have the basic necessities of life. That is, food, shelter, clothing, and access to things like power for lights and sanitation. While absolute poverty is certainly more common in developing nations, it does still exist in developed nations like the UK, where a certain number of people are still homeless and live without the basic necessities of life. What is more common in developed nations is relative poverty. This is where a household has less than 60% of the median income. These households have a lower standard of living because they can afford less things. Around 25% of households in the UK could be said to be living in relative poverty. However, this number looks set to increase with an increasing number of long-term ill from the pandemic and a slowing global economy. The use of food banks in the UK is at an all-time high. More and more people are having to come to these places to get the essentials that they need to survive. You may also have seen about the creation of warm banks these are places that people can go over the winter that can't afford to heat their home so that they can keep warm. In developing nations, many people are forced to live in shanty towns. These are very shoddy villages on the outskirts of cities with little or no access to basic needs like electricity and sanitation. This image of Mumbai, taken by drone photographer Johnny Miller, is part of a series that highlights the vast differences in the way people live in different countries between rich and poor. I would highly recommend that you search this series up and take a look at the other photos for the amazingly stark differences that they show. In developed nations like the UK, low income households will not be able to get access to loans to be able to buy their own homes and will be forced to have to rent. Cheaper rentals may be in older buildings with issues such as low quality insulation. These may also be clustered together, forming deprived areas that have lower qualities of services. When you consider that many people in developing nations live in absolute poverty without the food, shelter and clothing that they require, and combine this with the fact that access to health services is very low, it comes as no surprise that in developing nations, life expectancy is considerably lower than in developed nations. In developed nations, Poorer households may not be able to afford high quality food and they may not be able to participate in sports, not having the money for things like attending gyms or going to the pool. This can lead to sedentary lifestyles, which when combined with cheap but often unhealthy fast food choices can lead to poorer health outcomes. In developing nations, many people will not have access to a public education at all. This means that the people in those countries who can afford to pay to get their children educated will have a much better advantage over those people who can't, meaning that the gap between rich and poor is likely to only grow larger. In developed countries like the UK, the deprived areas that are where people with lower incomes are forced to live will often have poorer quality school choices. This makes it harder for people from poorer backgrounds to improve their situation in the future. The Human Development Index is a measure of the quality of life in different countries based on the life expectancy, average years in education, and gross income per capita in those countries. The IHDI, or Inequality Adjusted Human Development Index, will be lower than a country's Human Development Index. For many developed countries, this will only be a couple of percentage points difference but for less developed countries where the differences between rich and poor are stark, this can be closer to 30 or 40 per cent. That brings us to the end of this video discussing the consequences of the unequal distribution of wealth and income in various countries. Join me again in the next video when I'll be taking a look at price stability. Try the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics, and until next time, it's bye for now.